the headliner right here in our Gillespie Group storefront studio, Kyle Malin from MERS News. Good morning to you. Good morning, Michael Patrick. Want to talk politics a little bit? Yeah, sure. Do you ever talk about anything else? Uh, I can talk about sports. I usually do that in the office. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm sure when you go out and somebody runs into you at Tropo or one of the other places, the first thing they want to talk about is politics, right? Uh, usually, yeah. You ever get just, just like sick of it? And I know you must. Um, or you love it. You know what? No, I don't, actually. Really? You I don't, love it? I don't, I don't miss talking about it with other people. I, I like engaging people in the conversations. Really. Yeah. I think it's good. Um, what about this uh, news now we're seeing yesterday? There was a very uh, tough poll for President Obama. It looks like only 38% of those people asked by the Politico and George Washington think he deserves to be reelected. Yeah. You know, it's kind of it's not surprising to me because I always kind of feel like political attitudes are a pendulum swing. Yeah. And the farther you go back, the farther it goes forward. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so Barack Obama was so insanely popular when he was elected, it seems like it's only um, fitting or, or it would make only sense that when the when he's so high, he will also go so low, as if you know the expectations and the, uh, the attitude that he set when he first got elected uh, would turn into a bit of a disappointment when things didn't turn into utopia. It's like a correction then, sort of, huh? It is a little bit of a correction, and I think things will settle down at some point. Uh, you know, they'll go back toward the middle probably in two years when uh, maybe they start to realize, you know, in the grand scheme of things, maybe his presidency wasn't so bad. I mean, actually, maybe he did get something done. Mm. But in the short term, you know, when you, when you promise flowers everywhere um, and sunny skies and, and, oh, by the way, things are going to be tough, you know, people don't hear, oh, well, the things are going to be tough. They see the hope. They see the yeah. sun shining every day, you know. And so when it doesn't happen, I think it's only natural that people are going to be a little disappointed. Should we stop looking for saviors? Yes. It's, in our political world, yes. I, and, you know, I think maybe that bothers me more than anything else. And I think that we could actually see the same thing with Rick Snyder because mm -hmm. they, they see Rick Snyder as being, uh, you know, the super nerd who's going to go into the state and clean things up. And, hey, let me tell you, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done there. And when you have to work with 138 legislators to get anything done, it's going to take a lot of time. And, you know, if, if Rick Snyder is really going to be effective, uh, he could only just be a one-term governor. Mm -hmm. Because the things that he has to do would look will look very good long term. In the short term, it might not look that good, and voters will get agitated in four years. If you take the politics aside and you take the two candidates, Verge Bernero and Rick Snyder, which one, based on their experience and leadership, has a better chance of succeeding just through the process? Um, if you can say. You know what? If it was any other kind of businessman, I would say Verge Monero. But I think Rick Snyder is so sharp mm -hmm. and will surround himself with the right people that I think he will be a very quick learner, even though he doesn't know the process right now. I think Verge Monero knows the process very well, mm -hmm. and I think he knows a good ex to a good extent through experience what he's going to need to do. But I think Rick Snyder will learn very quickly. I know he doesn't right now, uh, but I think when it's all said and done, I think he will catch up quicker than folks realize, and I think he will be effective. I know where you're getting at in your question. If it was, let's say, Dick DeVos, I, I wouldn't say that. But since it's Rick Snyder, I would say that. I th don't think there's an advantage either way. Um, Mayor Bonero's trying to say now that uh, Rick Snyder's out of touch with the common person. <laughs> that, that's a common theme, isn't it? I mean, that usually surfaces in an election somewhere along the way. Yeah, this, Rick Snyder is not a blue blood, though. You know, and anybody who, who's kind of been in touch with his... Uh, biography or, or have gotten a feel from him listening to him in his talk appearances, his forums, his town hall forums or on the media. I, I just don't know how you can say that. I mean, it's not like he doesn't know the price of milk or something like that. You know, it's <laughs> not like he grows up or grew up in a bubble and is some, you know, super rich who doesn't know what's going on. Um, I don't know. Thus I, the I open know. collar and the sweater and that kind of thing. Yeah, I I just don't have a feeling that, that Rick Snyder has someone shopping for him or, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, somebody who gets his boots on in the morning. You know, it, it, it just doesn't strike me as being real. And, but, you know, it, it's something that Verge has to kind of go for, I guess. Which way should Verge Bernero play it uh, in the uh, debate, the one debate that he's going to get? Should he be the tough guy? Should he continue to be the angry mayor? Should he surprise everyone with a little change up and be warm and fuzzy? Well, I think whatever he does, he has to go for the home run. Yeah. Uh, because right now singles and even doubles aren't working. I mean, mm -hmm. he's got to find whatever, whatever is going to get somebody's attention and get the headline. 
You know, because it seems like in every good debate, there's that one headline. There's something that people yep. always remember. Mm -hmm. And for Verge, whatever it is, it's got to be positive and it's got to be on his front, the, what, the whatever it is. That's the tricky part because yeah. um, sometimes that doesn't get the attention. They want the uh, sucker punch. Well, I maybe, say they. We're, I'm one of them. <laughs> you know, and maybe it is the sucker punch. I mean, maybe it is some kind of roundhouse, but it can't look cheap, and it can't be something that we're talking about the next day saying, I can't believe Verge did that. That backfired. But you know what? When you take a risk, I mean, that's bound to happen. I mean, what's the difference for Verge Bonero if he loses by 5 or 10 percentage points mm -hmm. or 20 and 25 percentage points to him? You know, I guess for the Democrats, it's a huge deal because they could lose all sorts of races down ballot, theoretically. Uh, but for him... You know, he, you know, he wants to win. I mean, he doesn't want to f finish in second. That doesn't get you anything. So I, I think he's got to go big, whatever it is. And it's got to be something that headlines the next day and makes him look positive but doesn't make him look cheap or, or like he's picking on someone. You know, I've heard uh, different polls. Some of them say that John Dingell, the congressman from the, uh, well, Ann Arbor-Dearborn area now, I guess is the way it's redistrict, mm -hmm. is uh, uh, down. And then some say he's up by 25, a dead heat. Do you know, have any idea where that race stands? And the only reason I ask is uh, because he's the longest-serving member in the House yeah, of Representatives. Sure. It's a bellwether, isn't it? Um, you know, it's not really a bellwether. No? I, I don't think that district's a bellwether. I think if John Dingell gets upset, that would be one of the hugest upsets, I think, in Michigan political history. I'm mm -hmm. not really just saying that just on a on a way. You know, you know how much John Dingell won two years ago? He had like 70% of the vote. I mean, how do you go from 70% of the vote to actually being in trouble? I mean, I, I find that astounding. I know that in, in polling I've heard that it is a mildly competitive race considering the circumstances, mm -hmm. and it's hard to believe that he's in trouble. Um, you asked me if I think he's in trouble. I don't know what to believe either. I mean, I'm seeing the same polls. And I was asked, I remember I was asked a year ago, at, uh, I think, the Michigan Banking Association. And I said there was no way in God's green earth that this guy could be in trouble. How could John Dingle be in trouble? <laughs> That's what I figured. I mean, how, how could that... <clears throat> you could run this plant against him. I mean, it's just amazing that you could think that he could be in trouble, but you've got an, an opponent who's got some resources, who's riding this anti-incumbency attitude, which is big right now, riding the conservative, the fiscal conservative angle on him right now. And God, I... I don't know. You know, there's some sections of that district that are moderate. Uh, the, uh, Mon the Monroe County area can go both ways. But, God, Dearborn is so Democrat. It, it's just amazing. And, you know, the other one, too, is Dan Kildee up in uh, the 5th um, the Congressional District. He's got an aggressive challenger, too. And, you know, maybe he's within 10 percentage points. And I guess that just speaks to the atmosphere you know, of, of mm -hmm. politics right now. I guess at the end of the day, I don't think either Kildee or Dingle are going to get beat. Uh, but it's it's just fascinating that we're talking about it right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, what about the uh, Secretary of State race? What's the skinny behind that? I, I keep hearing that uh, Jocelyn Benson is trailing. Yeah, I suppose. But only because she has a D after her name, I think, right now. I don't know if anybody's really dialed into either race. Uh, and I mean Secretary of State or Attorney General. Yeah. Um, there hasn't really been any ads that have been floated on it right now, and there hasn't been a lot of stories written about it. I mean, there was a very lively debate on Off the Record mm -hmm. um, on Friday between the two major party attorney general candidates. I tell you what, <laughs> I, I thought it was a lively debate. I don't know how much information got shared, but um, as, a, as a pure entertainment value, I thought it was fantastic. Um, it didn't get a lot of press. Uh, it got some that didn't get a lot. Right. And I just don't know how many, how much people are dialed in. I think they're looking for the, the brass ring here. I mean, things are going bad right now So in, in Michigan. So why are we focused on uh, the second-tier races when really what we care about are the first-tier races and what's going to make a large difference to our lives? So are you suggesting, then, that the Secretary of State race and the Attorney General race will be decided by those who pull the R lever or the D lever as opposed to cherry-picking? Maybe. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, it, it, it could be a little bit more complicated than that. I mean, which ones are the outsider? Which ones? I think people will make up their minds late on that. Well, let's just say that. I mean, the polling uh, right now is focused on the R and the Ds. I think voters will become educated on the two candidates. And I think they will make an educated, uh, mildly educated decision on which way they want to go. I just don't think right now they're dialed in uh, because the House is burning. They're not really worried about the 
the the the, uh, the trees and the lawn right now. <laughs> I mean, they're really not. And and to be honest, I've always thought the Secretary of State and the Attorney General, by and large, well, I, maybe not so much the AG. The Secretary of State is a clerical position; it really mm-hmm. is. And if you're in the news as the Secretary of State, you're you're probably doing something bad. Ruth John, oh, I got forty seconds left. She supposedly spent two hundred thousand dollars more of her own money, and she wants it badly. Then. Yeah, I can't believe she has that kind of money. I mean, she's yeah. been she's been a state representative, you know, before that, and then she was county clerk. I, you know, I I don't know. Maybe her husband. Hey, must be money. good in Oakland County. Well, maybe her husband's got some money. I yeah. don't know. You know, it's always kind of that chicken the egg. I mean, you spend money. I mean, you get banged because you you have you spend your own money. You get banged because you're spending other people's money. Yeah. I mean, you got to spend money to win elections. I guess I'd be curious to know where she got it from. It's probably nothing nefarious, though. Knowing Ruth, how can people find you online? Uh, www.mersnews.com it's m-i-r-s news.com I know the insiders do the rest of us will too and thanks for being here so early hey it's my pleasure Michael Patrick Kyle Malin will talk politics with you anytime anywhere and always online of course at 35 after the hour I'm Michael Patrick Shields on this rainy Tuesday